Congress setting up our next conversation as a shutdown looms and the debt continues to balloon. Our next guest says the longer term problem is that our two political parties are so far apart and seemingly unwilling uh, to fix the problem. Let's bring in Aaron Klein, senior fellow with the uh, left leaning, I'm sort of obligated to say, Brookings <laughs> Institution. Aaron, welcome. Good to see you there. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm glad you're with us. Let me try and untangle this a little bit. Uh, Emily talked about th this being, a, we don't get an agreement on a top line for spending for next year. As I understand it, this is really spending for this year. That We're talking about fiscal 24, right? Yeah, no, the, the government runs on an October 1 to October 1 basis, and they Congress has kicked the can down the road so far that we're talking about January 19th or February 1st for the funding levels for this fiscal year, which basically runs through this September. So it is about the amount of money that's going to be spent into the economy this year and about whether or not the government is going to have a partial shutdown. And how much, of, how much of this dispute, among the many disputes that uh, seem to uh, afflict Washington uh, these days, how much is this dispute tied up with the, with the question of uh, military funding to Ukraine and Israel on the one hand and border security funding on the other? Or is that sort of a separate issue? So it had been a bit of a separate issue in terms of the White House's approach to adding a supplemental. This is what we're talking about is the regular money that funds the government for the entire year. What the White House proposed was extra money known as a supplemental, which happens often to focus on Ukraine and Israel. And we're willing to make some border security adjustments in permanent law, as well as some more money to the border to get that through. Uh, so these are two separate tracks that have become interwoven as the political traffic jam backs up. Mm -hmm. Do you see a way, let's talk about the, the broader question, which is the, the longer term uh, debt situation the United States is in, that matter of, of overall funding for fiscal 2024 as apart from the, from the supplemental. Do you see a way forward or are these parties so locked into their positions that a shutdown is almost inevitable? So there, there's a way forward, but for that way forward, you have to have a negotiation. A negotiation requires identifying the other side. Is the other side House Republicans? Is the other side Senate Republicans? What is it the other side wants? Do they want cuts to discretionary funding? Do they want border security and immigration? You have to have a negotiation. And right now, it's difficult to know within the Republican Party who you're negotiating with. Look, this top line number that the congressman referenced before had been agreed to with Speaker McCarthy. Now there is no Speaker McCarthy, and this we're going backwards in the negotiation as the House Republicans change their leadership. I still wonder, Aaron, if we don't have a reckoning going up, because the structural deficit, well, I don't want to get too technical, but now that interest costs are basically going to be half the deficit for the foreseeable future, and the more we run these deficits, the more we're going to add to the debt, which means we're going to have perpetually high interest costs for the foreseeable future. How do we, how do we get out of that situation? So the longer term uh, political reckoning that has to come as it relates to spending and revenue uh, is nowhere on the agenda. That's not that's not a 2024 issue. That's going to require, I think, a pretty structural realignment of the political parties. There used to be a consensus in Washington. When I first started in the Senate, we had something called pay go, pay as you go. It was a remnant of the Clinton era where we built up surpluses. Republicans and Democrats, President Bush the first through Clinton, kind of agreed that, that you had to pay for what you spent. And, you know, since then, it's just been not when the Republicans are in control, a tax cut frenzy with voodoo economics that these tax cuts pay for themselves, which they never do, digging a very, very large hole, and then a series of major calamities that have required large amounts of money, like COVID, like the 08 financial crisis. Uh, and, you know, now we're seeing things on the defense side. And so until there's a real change in parties and the voter priorities or an extra event that pushes that direction, the long-term issues are just off the table right now. Yeah, some people say that's why they think longer-term bond yields will remain uh, higher for the time being. We'll just have to wait and see. Aaron, thanks for your time. We appreciate it.